You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's Oh Behave with Arden Moore, the show that teaches you how to have harmony in the household with your pets. Join Arden as she travels coast to coast to help millions better understand why cats and dogs do what they do. Get the latest scoop on famous faces. They're perfectly pampered pets in Who's Walking Who in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails. Garner great pet tips and have a doggone fur-flying fun time. So get ready for the pause and applause as we unleash your all-behave host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Today's show promises to be sexy and a bit catty and all for a great cause. You know, the new year is approaching and have we got a perfect calendar for you and your friends to buy and admire. We're talking hot guys and cool cats. That's because our special guest today played a paw, if you will, in the creation of a 2012 calendar featuring hunky guys and adorable cats all working together to benefit an L.A.-based organization called Found Animals. Yep, the calendar sizzles. Its title, I love it, Six Packs, Nine Lives. Okay, it is radio, but the guys portrayed are definitely eye candy, and they definitely debunk the myth that the only feline fans are crazy cat ladies. Our guests today are first the very talented photographer, Adam Buska, and we also, ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. May, Igor Javrovsky. I'm so glad, Adam, you're on their show. Welcome to the Old Behave Show. No, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. All right. Now, everybody, listen carefully because we're going to share just how you can get your paws on one of these 2012 Six Packs, Nine Lives, 2012 calendar to benefit found animals. We're going to have a special code word, so you got to listen carefully. Details are coming, everybody, so I want everybody right now to sit and stay. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Time for a pause. Four furry ones actually sit and stay. All Behave will be right back. Molly, here's your dinner. <laughs> Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. All Behave is back with more tail-wagging ways to achieve harmony in the household with your pets. Now, back to your fetching host, America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Welcome back to the Old Behave Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. I'm delighted that our first guest really knows how to spot beauty in all beings. I'm talking men, women, cats, others. He is the very talented and accomplished professional photographer, Adam Buska. And you know what? You're going to know his work. He has photographed magazine and book covers for such celebrities as Jane Lynch. Adam, we're trying to get her on the show. Hint, hint. He's gotten Barry Manilow. Lots of folks. Deepak Chopra. The list goes on and on. You just have a brilliant eye for capturing the essence of what all these people represent. But you had the special challenge with this calendar to get a pack of cats to work with a hunk of guys. How challenging was that compared to some of your other photo shoots, Adam? Well, it, it definitely was challenging. I mean, everyone always say uh, pets and babies are the most difficult to work with. But at the end of the day, working um, with two things that I love most, guys and cats, it was uh, definitely my passion and definitely came through. I, I loved every minute of it. Um, the cats were a joy to work with, and I definitely hope I can do this more often in my industry. I love it. Well, you did a great job, and I want everybody to write this down. His website is brilliant. It's Busca.net, and I'm going to spell it for all you guys. 
B as in boy, O-U-S-K-A dot net. Check him out. I think one of the most um, enjoying experiences and parts of being a part of a calendar like this is being able to work with the different personalities of the different cats and trying to match them um, with the different themes going on in the different months. Um, every cat has such a unique personality and brings something different to the table. So it definitely was fun to see what each cat kind of was acting like and what it would kind of do to interact with each model. So let's get a little background on this, and I, I want everybody to do this. We're going to give away 10 copies of the calendar by being the first 10 to email Arden at Four-Legged Life. I think we should use the code word six-pack. What do you think? Six-pack. Is that okay with you, oh, that Adam? That sounds like a sexy idea. I like that idea. <laughs> I like that. Okay. All right. So that's all you guys got to do, and we're going to announce the winners. It's going to a great cause, foundanimals.org. It's a nonprofit here in Los Angeles, and they came up with a creative fundraiser. So we need to get a little bit of background on this, if you can help us out, Adam. How did you get involved in this project, and how in the heck did they get these cats to make such great poses with these guys? Uh, well, I, ideally, um, it all came down to found animals. They approached me because they had the idea of trying to create some kind of new concept to raise awareness that cats can really adapt to any lifestyle, and they make a great pet, regardless if you're a man or a woman. Um, we all have the idea, or everyone believes that dogs are a man's best friend, but that's far from the truth, I feel. I mean, I have two cats myself, and they're just as equal of a great companion, if not better, than a dog. So we wanted to portray that and show that all these guys out there had real-life cats, that they had amazing lives with and amazing stories that went with them. So we held open casting calls and had different guys come in with their cats, and um, it was really amazing to see the different backgrounds and see the different situations, how one would kind of adopt their cat or the cat would adopt them. <laughs> Well, or in some of these photos, then, are they actually the guys with their own cats or some of these shelter cats? Um, no, definitely. We had some shelter cats because not all cats were models, per se, and not all of them, all of them were um, camera-friendly. <laughs> but um, I would say a lot of them were with the real cats, and a lot of them, Mr. January, um, had his, on his uh, in his backpack on his motorcycle, and that was his real cat who came out for the shoot. And each month poses a different challenge, but, I mean, it was a lot of fun to kind of see what we could come up with. <laughs> Now, Mr. January came to the photo shoot with his cat in the pack from a motorcycle. He posed with him in a backpack. I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, talk about the ultimate travel kitty. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are your cat's names, what are, and what are they like? What's their um, personalities? Uh, my two cats are Hank and Randall. They're definitely different personalities altogether, and Hank it can actually be found in the calendar with uh, my partner, Mr. February. Um, okay. But Hank is definitely the mayor of our house. He definitely likes to perch upon really high places and overlooks the whole scene of the household, and he likes to take control, while our other cat, Randall, tends to be more of the snuggle bug and doesn't come out till night. He's more of a, a shy cat, but definitely, I would say, the most affectionate of any of our animals. <laughs> and who is Mr. February? we got to give a credit to your partner. <laughs> Mr. February is my partner, Jeff Parshley, and he's also the co-founder of the No Hate Campaign. Um, we like to work with each other whenever we can get the opportunity to, so... Um, we saw another opportunity to work with this cat calendar and raise awareness, so he'd like to jump into Mr. February. Yeah, you did a AIDS project with him back in 08, right? Correct. Um, we worked um, on a calendar um, in 2009 for a Fiesta Cantina, which raised $13,000 for APLA. Um, we featured different people that worked at the restaurant. So we've had experience working on calendars in the past, but we always try to see how we can use photography, which is our talent, to kind of help raise awareness for another cause. Because it's fun to do something we love, but also... It's even more fun to help other people out while we can do it at the same time. Yeah. You know, there's been other themed calendars, you know, where they've had like these sexy old ladies like Helen Marin posing in calendars and they've made a movie on it. I like that you're kind of stepping out of the box, I guess stepping out of the litter box, if you will, in this case, <laughs> to come up with a really creative concept. And I think gay men, young women, and old cougar ladies are going to like gobble this up. Oh, most definitely. I'm, I've already been surprised at how well it's been going. We knew the calendar would really receive a lot of attention because it was a unique concept, but it's really been amazing to see people rallying behind this and really get excited about the calendar because it's for a great cause and it's all about showing that cats make great pets, so it's an amazing thing. You know, if we did the numbers, Adam, cats actually do outnumber dogs and households, so if we did the popularity contest, the cats should win, paw down. I mean, I'm an equal opportunity pet owner in my house. I've got two dogs and two cats, but I made sure that Chipper and Cleo knew that Zeke and Murphy are gods. And so we don't have any uh, hair flying in our house. In my house, it's two cats and one dog. So they, they outnumber in my household. So that would be true of mine. <laughs> and what kind of dog and what's your dog's name? 
I have a small chihuahua named Jackson. Oh, nice. And he, he was uh, adopted after we had adopted the cat, so we believe that he thinks he's a cat sometimes. He likes to follow them around and play with them all the time. It's amazing how well he really fits in with them. When you were doing the shoots, I know you've got the lighting, you got to work, and you got to get the right outfit for the guys and all that. But what were some of the things, because you have cats, that you think you could tap into to be able to bring out the best in the look of the cat or the pose? What kind of strategies did you use? I feel like at the end of the day, just like a person, um, the cat had to be comfortable. It was all about making him comfortable and putting him in an environment that he felt safe and he wanted to be in. So we just spent some time with the cat before we actually started shooting, and then we tried to keep it quick and painless as possible. (laughs) Um, I think keeping it quick um, was part of what made it work because a lot of these cats, they would warm up to us, but not always would just stay for the whole shot. So we had to keep it quick and painless. And what about their eyes? They have such beautiful soul-dipping eyes. When you're doing a shot with a cat, what's sort of the way you're looking at to capture that those beautiful big eyes? Yeah, a lot, a lot of that has to do with lighting. And, I mean, cats um, are beautiful animals, and they're also unique and individual in their own respect. Um, so trying to bring out their features was an important part of this project. We wanted to put a lot of focus on the cats. So keeping them... Um, looking into the camera, we'd always have another assistant or a cat wrangler on hand trying to play with some toys, trying to get the cat's attention. We'd play with them a lot. But to get them to look into the camera was important to us because we wanted to to show the cat size and we wanted them to make that connection and show them off. Well, you did that really well. You know, the calendar is called Six Packs, Nine Lives. It is a dollar from every sale of the calendar from uh, the Brown Trout Publishers is going to be donated It's to benefit the L.A.-based organization called Found Animals. Everybody, you can dash over to foundanimals.org to learn more about that. I guess you guys, uh, Found Animals, bought about 10,000 of these calendars, and they're they're trying to raise money and awareness for cats, right? Correct, and they're also using the calendars as a fundraising tool as well. They're using the calendars um, to donate to other organizations where they're using them to raise direct funds for their organization, so... The calendar works as many functions. It's raising awareness and money, and it's a lot of fun at the same time. Yeah, and you've got these guys. They're, I keep wanting to say the village people. Sorry, man, but you've got everybody from a <laughs> motorcycle rider, a guy lifting weights. I mean, you I'll, unleashed I'll your creativity. I'll take the village people. That's a compliment. I like the village people. I mean, we have a, a, a variety. It's very diverse. We like being diverse. So we, we just wanted to make sure that we could kind of show all different spectrums. I mean, cats are great for all lifestyles and all types of guys. So we wanted to show every single type of guy that we could. And these are real guys that own cats. And that was an important part of this project for Found Animals. Um, They had an extensive casting process where they did interviews with all the guys and they would ask them questions about their experience with cats. It was very important to them. So it was just an important part of this project. Now you have your cats, Hank and Randall. I have this little theory working that guys like to have cats with macho names. My brother Kevin has a cat named Logger. I mean, oh, you never like hear us call their cat, you know, Princess. Is that true? <laughs> princess and Logger are far, yeah, far opposites. I've never actually thought about that, but I'm going to have to start seeing what my friends have No, it's just a little, whether you're true. gay or straight, I got a lot of friends from all parts of the globe. One of my favorite veterinarians, Arnie Plotnick, he's a great gay guy that's been in some calendars in New York to raise some money. And, you know, he's got a cat named Crispy because the cat came to him because someone tried to burn the cat's ears. And so oh, no. instead of giving it a sweet name like, you know, Princess, it's Crispy. My guy roommate uh, back in Palm Springs had an all-white cat that we used to call Cinderella because it used to crawl into the fireplace every once in a while and then come out all black and ashy. Well, all right. Well, that's clever. That's pretty clever. <laughs> that is clever. It's close to Cinderella, but it's not quite. It's still kind of a princess. Now, were any of these guys, without naming them, being uh, divas on the set? Or uh, did you have to have any of the cats say, your history? Or were everybody pretty <laughs> game for the shoot? Everyone is it's extremely supportive. And it was really exciting to have them all as a part of the project. Um, I feel like some of the cats might have been divas at the time. Um, right. But they definitely worked past it. I mean, every cat had a different personality. Some were more cooperative than others. But I feel like at the end of the day, they, they all enjoyed being there. But um, definitely bigger personalities than some of them. <laughs> All right. Now, I saw the cover you did uh, recently on Jane Lynch. Tell the listeners about that because she's kind of the it girl, at least for this week because of the Emmys. Yeah. Now, Jane Lynch, I had an amazing time working with her um, originally on the No Hate campaign, and that's how I was originally introduced to her. And we had such a great experience working together there that um, we decided to do 
the book cover together. Her publisher had reached out to me because I had worked with that particular publisher on Megan McCain's book cover as well. And um, Jane Lynch came into the studio, and we had a lot of fun. We played with different concepts of her bursting through the backdrop and just fun ideas, but essentially with the title Happy Accidents and someone like Jane Lynch. I mean, it was a memorable experience and definitely one of my favorite shoots that I've had. That sounds great. What about Megan? Because everybody, what was the, um, oh gosh, with Will McCormick, Will and Grace. Working with Megan was an awesome experience, and that was so unique in the respect that we got to work with a real elephant for that one. We got to drive out to an elephant ranch, and we worked with um, some concepts of her riding on the back of the elephant, and then somewhere where she was spraying in with the hose and kind of being more dirty. We had the concept of dirty, sexy politics to play with. So we did some yeah. clean stuff and then we kind of got down dirty and had some fun with it. So it was, it was a lot of fun too. But um, um, being able to work with these figures through the No Hate campaign has really opened up the possibilities and the opportunities for me to work with all kinds of different people. So it's been all kinds of different projects lately and it's exciting to see where it's going. No, you're doing well now with Barry Manilow. I mean, you see these very famous people and you've got to kind of convince them that there might be this theme you want for the photo shoot. So with him, what some of the works you've done with him and how was it to get him to be a sport and do it? Yeah, definitely. And Barry Manilow is such a professional and um, I got to work with him for the cover of a magazine in Palm Springs for one of their local magazines. He was performing for a benefit and I had to go to the local theater and photograph him. But the challenge with that is that I only had maybe five or ten minutes to make it work without any lighting setup or anything like that. And working with a professional like Barry Manilow, he had limited time. So we got in there and he just did what he needed to do. We did some different shots with him around the piano and stuff like that. But he was such a natural and being able to work with him was a great experience um, because there was a lot of great chemistry there. And just being able to have that experience definitely showed me that some of these things can only take five or ten minutes, and sometimes you just need to make the most of that opportunity. But um, it was, again, one of my favorite experiences. Just being well, we have a lot in common. You're like a Midwest him. guy. You're from Decatur, Illinois. I grew up right across Crown Point, Indiana. You've got some Midwest roots, I guess. But did you ever, when you were a little kid, did you have like a little Kodak camera in your hand, or what was it that got you to get the photography bug? Yeah, that was always something that my mom was always pushing on me. Art itself was always a big influence in my life, and I grew up painting different collages and different cartoons and you name it, different graffiti and different just art all over my walls as I was growing up. But the camera didn't even come into play until I was out of college and moved to California. It was just something I just never, I don't know, I knew that art was for me. I just never, I guess, put it into that form. But once I started picking it up as a hobby... It just it changed my life. I started posing in front of the camera, and then I started gaining more of an opinion on how I wanted the picture to come out. My creative uh, side just started being more, um, I don't know, it just, it just came out around then when I was 19. And then for six years, I've been photographing here in L.A., and it's just never been the same for me. I couldn't imagine not photographing. <laughs> oh, you do great work, and I want to do a little bragging on you because I know you're, you're a humble guy. But, hey, listeners, Adam Busca has been named the Advocates 40 and Under, that's the great gay magazine. He's been Instinct Magazine's leading men of 2009. He's been recognized by the West Hollywood community's leading photographer. You've won a lot of awards. Your works have appeared in the New York Times, the Guinness Book of World Records, Chelsea Lately, the Today Show, The View. I mean, the list goes on and on. And you haven't even gotten near to age 30 yet. I'm impressed. <laughs> Yeah, it's exciting. And for me, I mean, it's, it's a dream come true being able to do what I love and being able to do that every day and having that creative control over it. It's always bringing something new and it's exciting. And speaking of different places, my work's been featured. Something exciting that I was alerted to this morning is that the cat calendar was featured in Times Square on the Jumbotron. So no way, really? Exciting to see. Yeah, they sent me some images of it being featured uh, just this morning and it was awesome to see the amount of people around the sign and amazing to think of the awareness that could bring. Oh my gosh, congratulations. That is a pretty high honor. I mean, I'm sure your Thank cats, you. you know, Hank and Randall are like, yawn, whatever. We still love them. He gives us <laughs> nice food. <laughs> Maybe if it were them, they would feel differently. But <laughs> You know, we're listening and speaking with Adam Busca. He is the genius photographer behind this. you got to get this calendar, 2012. It is called the Six Packs, Nine Lives, 2012 calendar. It's The money is going to benefit Found Animals. That's foundanimals.org, a group in L.A., and we're giving away 10 copies of the Six Packs, Nine Lives calendar. And these guys are hunks on this calendar. And the cats are pretty easy on the eyes, too. Just go to Arden at FourLeggedLife.com. And I want you guys to give me the code word 
six pack. And the first 10 to do that, you're going to get your paws on these calendar, which is like a piece of art every month. You're going to be drooling with delight because of the guys and the cats. And we have Adam Busca to thank. And I want everybody also to get to know this guy. He is very talented. You need to go to Busca.net. It's B as in boy, O-U-S-K-A dot net. Adam, I'm so glad you could be a guest on our show. And I'm so glad that you proved that real men love cats. (laughs) It's true. And it's the situation that's out there. And it's everything that I've grown to know and love. So it's really an honor to be working on a project like this, and I hope that maybe next year and future years to come, we can have more projects with hot guys and cats, and they'll love to be a part of it. (laughs) Well, my cats, Zeke and Murphy, they're admiring you right now. They give me little soft winks to pass on to you, which is a way of cats saying, I love you, man. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Adam, thank you so much for being a guest on our show. And stay right there, folks, because after this commercial break, we're bringing on one of the hunks, from the calendar, we're talking Mr. May right after we take this commercial break. So everybody sit and stay. We'll be right back. Time for a walk on the red carpet, of course. All Behave will be back in a flash right after these messages. Love My Pets, the new single by Mark Winter, available on iTunes. Let's Talk Pets. Let's Talk Pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Hi, this is Jen Davis, the creator of Garfield, urging you to listen to the O Behave Show with Arden Moore on Pet Life Radio. Oh, yeah? We'll see about that. We're back from the lot. Just check the paper and we had a record showing at the box. The letterbox, that is. Now back to OBHAY. Here's Arden. Welcome back to the OBHA show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Arden Moore. Our first guest, Adam Buska, is the genius behind the camera lens that captured those amazing poses by the cats and the hunky guys for the 2012 Six Packs, Nine Lives calendar. Well, we're in for a special treat for the rest of the show. I am pleased to welcome one of the very hot models from the calendar. You may know him by his nickname, Mr. May, but his real name is Igor Javrowski, and I want to welcome you to the show, Igor. Hi, thanks for having me. All right, now, I was doing a little uh, sniffing around your name, because there's not like three million people on the planet, I think, by your name, unless that's, you know, an Eastern European name equivalent of John Smith. Is that no, no, this, this particular combination is pretty rare. Awesome, awesome. So, and I'm looking around, I see your face, and you're very hunky and smiling in the calendar as you've got this, this is radio, so i got to describe it. Hey, ladies, gentlemen, he's in a sleeveless tee, he's got faded jeans, he's got this hose kind of sexually wrapped around him, and there's this cool cat, a little brown striped tabby perched on a wheelbarrow full of flowers getting a ride from our guy, Igor. So, Igor, how in the heck did you land in this calendar? Well, my <laughs> girlfriend actually brought it up to me because, um, as you know, the, the calendar is made to um, benefit found an- the Found Animals Foundation. So my girlfriend knows the um, founder of Found Animals. Okay. She said, hey, they've got this, uh, this, ca- this casting going on. It's hot guys and their cats. <laughs> and you have a cat, and you're hot. So I said, you're absolutely right. So we went down to the uh, casting, the audition, and uh, and that was it. Now, is the cat in the wheelbarrow your cat? Yes, that's my boy, oh. Woo. Woo? Is that W-O-O? Yeah. That is W-O-O. It's a, a nod to the Big Lebowski. I don't know if either of you guys are fans. Oh, from the bowling? Yes, the bowling movie. So if you remember yeah. in the yeah. like the opening scene, when... Jeff Bridges gets home, there's, you know, some stuff goes on, and ultimately, the Chinaman, excuse me, it should be Asian, Asian American, but Chinaman is how they refer to him in the movie, urinates on the dude's rug, and that guy's name was Wu. Now, my cat uh, was a stray. He actually decided to move himself into my apartment, and uh, the first day he did that, he came in, took a look around, liked the place, and peed all over my rug. Yes, that's the Just equivalent the- of being, uh, hey, that's P-email in cat talk. 
That's the way they had their business cards. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Who yeah, was he here? Made known, <laughs> made it known that he was happy where he was. Oh, my gosh. And how old is Wu now? He's uh, 10-ish. Okay, cool. He, I know they don't have little ID cards in their little collars popping out like we do, but um, <laughs> you know, I he's a nice looking guy, and and I looked at the picture, and you're talking to a woman who wrote the cat behavior answer book, so I'm looking at this picture, and I oh. thought this guy has to know this cat. The cat is calm, very comfortable, even though Wu is on top of a bunch of colorful flowers. <laughs> they look like roses and tulips, I guess. So, so how was he at the photo shoot? Did he hang out all right? Well, he was, uh, he was actually uh, a little nervous, definitely mm-hmm. nervous. You know, came in to the place and, uh, you know, he decided to poop on the floor. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> he, nerves. I've, I've done that yeah. before. It's, it's not pleasant, but it happens. I know, we, we've all been there. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, once we got that over with, uh, he, he settled down and uh, didn't have a good time with it. All right. Now, folks, we are talking to Igor Javrowski. And you know what? I was looking around, and he's got many talents. Not only is he a hunk for a calendar for a great cause, which is going to benefit the Found Animals Organization, but, folks, you are listening to Brainiac 187, squad leader of the 187 clan. Oh, please, Igor, you've got to tell us more. <laughs> so that was uh, as part of a short film that a friend of mine had written called Gamers Anonymous. And the premise of that was that uh, uh, basically you've got this group of people who are so, they're, they're addicted to gaming. Similar to Alcoholics Anonymous, they, you know, they have to go to Gamers Anonymous to basically get their, their lives back. So I was, uh, and part of the plot is that Brainiac is the leader of this squad in the game, and none of the members of the squad have ever actually met each other. We only know each other through the game. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so, you know, hijinks ensue later on when we all start to sort of run into each other. But, yeah, that's the the basic premise. It's a bunch of strangers who are, you know, a band of brothers online and in real life probably wouldn't like each other very much. And how can people find out more about it? Where's the site to check it out? That's a good question. I believe it's on YouTube. It's been a while since I've been in contact with uh, the director. But I believe if you look up Gamers Anonymous on YouTube, you should be able to find it. Okay, now, are you also the same Igor that had a bit role in The Lazy Assassin? <laughs> <laughs> wow, you guys did do some homework. Not only was I had the bit role, I actually produced that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, sacre bleu, sorry. Well, in my previous <laughs> life, I was an investigative newspaper reporter, so I, I like Get to check out my guest. Get out of town. <laughs> yep, yep. I used to also be a sports writer, so I covered Super Bowls and all. So now my life oh. has gone to the dogs and cats, but I love to meet people from all different backgrounds. So tell us about The Lazy Assassin. The Lazy Assassin, uh, the title is really pretty descriptive. It's a story <laughs> about an, an assassin who's who's become lazy. You know, he used to love what he did and, you know, he was, he was the best at it. But uh, for whatever reason, he got to the point in his life where, he, you know, he didn't love it anymore. So, but he sort of gets stuck in, in routine. So he sort of kept on doing it, but he got lazy. He got out of shape. And, uh, you know, he still sort of got the job done, but it was very sloppy and people weren't necessarily happy with him. So it gets to the point where uh, the people that hire him say, okay, look, you've got, you've got this one last kill or... <laughs> It's basically lights out for you, and I'm that last kill. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> you're hoping he's so, real lazy by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so he goes after me, and um, I just leave it at that. Okay. You you're guys? suspended now. How do we find out more about you, Igor? I mean, do you have like you know, do you own a uh, you know a building? Are you hanging out in Times Square? I mean, wh- <laughs> how do we find out more about you? Because you you've done a nice, kind thing for found animals by being part of the calendar, but. How do we learn more about you? Well, I, I'll, I'll actually tell you because uh, I recently moved from Los Angeles to Rhode Island, and I'm actually talking to you from Rhode Island right now. I've, I've oh, gone wow. back to graduate school. Really? What are you majoring in? Physical therapy. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, you know what? When uh, Wu needs a nice massage, a therapeutic massage for your brown tabby, um, he's going to be <laughs> quite a lucky cat. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get a lot of uh, practice massages over the next couple of years. Ah, that's it, Igor. A little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got it. <laughs> no, I, I actually, I, I know all his, uh, his good spots, so he's not a good subject to practice on anymore. Okay. Well, one thing I do ask you, and I love this, I believe that real men love cats, and it sounds mm-hmm. like Wu is your guy. So 
What is it? I mean, there's a lot of guys that like cats. What is it about the connection you have with Wu that you think is ma- makes you guys such good buds? Well, uh, let me just, just say this first. You know, with all due respect to the to the women on, uh, in my <laughs> life, Wu is the love of my life. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, uh, you know, it's just um, I don't think it's any different than than the bond a guy would have with a dog. But people, guys especially, tend to overlook cats because, you know, there's a stereotype of cats are for girls and you know, you've got the crazy cat lady and real yeah. men have, you know, big uh, pit bulls or, you know, what, whatever the, the latest masculine Stud image dog is, yeah. is. But, I mean, you just got to get over it. You, mm-hmm. you either have a bond with an animal or you don't. And right. for me and Wu, there was uh, there was a bond right away. The thing wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> he kept following me around the apartment building and finally moved himself in. And he so hasn't just, really had, had any... No, but it, just, you know yeah. what? I think cats bring a lot to our lives. I think they do teach us it's okay to be candid, ask for what mm-hmm. you want, don't you think? And, you know, they teach us a little bit about dignity and they're... They don't fake. They either like you or you don't. And I think when a cat likes you, I, I hear a lot of friends, I have cats and dogs. I have two dogs and two cats. And I like it, you know, because Chipper and Cleo, my dogs, give me kisses and they greet mm-hmm. me when I come in. But when mm-hmm. my two cats, Zeke and Murphy, come to say hi and they purr and they do a head butt, I feel like, wow, I feel like a rock star. There's yeah, something it, when a cat likes you, it's even better than when a dog likes you, I think. Because dogs like yeah, a it, lot of people. They're picky. They're picky. Yeah. You know, dogs like, they basically like everyone, and that's, that's great. It, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But, uh, yeah, you're right. With cats, it's, uh, it's very much one-on-one, and if they don't like you, they don't want anything to do with you. And if they do, then, you know, they're, they're your boy for life, basically. <laughs> that's great. I, so, I love the headbutts, too. That he, that's how I get woken up in the morning is headbutts. Really? That's the ultimate yeah. kitty, you rock my world gesture. Yeah. So yeah. you rock with Wu. So did you get to meet any of the other models, or were they individual shoots that Adam set up for you guys? The shoots were all individual, but I did meet most of them, some of them at the, uh, at the casting. Okay. And do most of them into cats or have cats? They all did. Oh, nice. As, as far as nice. I uh, Yeah, I believe everybody that was actually in the calendar all have cats of their own. Well, I wanted to let you know, we're giving away 10 copies of the Six Packs, Nine Lives calendar. And folks, we're talking to one of the models. He's awesome. He loves his cat, Woo. All you have to do is the code word Six Pack and email Arden at FourLeggedLife.com. And the first 10 will get their paws on a copy of this really great, well-photographed, easy on the eyes calendar it's coming out for 2012 which is nice and just a little shout out if we can to found animals it's a group out in la it's a non-profit and they really try hard to bring awareness to folks about different animal welfare issues and they have a spay neutering clinic they really try to get pets in homes they do pet adoptions pet spay and neutering microchipping a lot of different events but i think they hit a home run with this idea what do you think igor yeah i'm incredibly impressed with how it turned out and i hope that uh you know people go out and buy the calendar because like you said it's it's all for uh, an amazing cause you know one of the other things that found animals likes to do is education and really to steer people away from pet breeders and towards shelters and rescues because there's so many animals out there. And the sad fact of the matter is that most of them, the number cost around is 75% of, of cats in shelters get euthanized. And it's, it's a shame. It's really yeah. a shame. So definitely go out, look for the calendar. You can get it on Amazon. The money from the calendar goes, part of the money goes specifically towards their cat-based initiatives, and the rest of it obviously is going to go towards like, you know, their general funding but yeah if you if you love cats if you know somebody who loves cats or even if you love dogs you know it's a, it's for a good cause because cats are awesome yeah let's, let's and be honest with ourselves <laughs> they are i jokingly say that cats put the c in candid the a in attitude the t in tenacious and the s in so what <laughs> that's a good one i'm getting the and so I, what look right now you know you're getting the so what yeah that's all right and i want people to dash over to foundanimals.org and you're going to learn more about this great organization that Igor and the rest of the hunks from the Six Pack Nine Lives calendar are benefiting. And as he said, you can find out about the calendar. It's on Amazon, a lot of places, but you can also go to foundanimals.org and figure out how to order one for yourself, all your cat-loving pals. 
And uh, I think there's a lot of cougars out there, and I'm talking about the two-leggers, that were, are very excited to also compete to try to win one of these 10 calendars, Igor. Not just the young women, not just the gay guys. We got everybody. Everybody <laughs> loves you guys. You guys could run for office. You got everybody loving you. Yeah, we got a little something for everybody in the calendar. <laughs> well, I'm delighted that you've been a guest on our show. I am talking to Mr. May. He is Igor Jedrowski. Did I do it again right? Yes, good. Getting- All right. Woohoo! More one for Arden Moore. Two <laughs> and one syllable. Three syllables total in my whole name. Anyway, he has been a great guest on our show. He has an awesome cat named Wu, and he's here to help benefit a great cause, found animals. Cats really dig you, Igor. You've done a great thing by posing. I hope that um, you do well in grad school as a physical therapist. I think you've, uh, you've got the right touch, as they say. And I say that with all kindness. And also at this time, I want to thank my awesome producer, Mark Winter. He makes this show, folks, happen each and every week. He's the reason, he's the brainiac behind why uh-huh. Pet Life Radio is now the number one pet podcast network on the planet. So we need to applaud him for that, too. So, everybody, until next time, this is your flea-free host, Arden Moore, delivering just two words to all you two, three, and four-leggers out there. Oh, behave! Coast to coast and around the world, it's Oh, Behave with Arden Moore. Find out why cats and dogs do the things they do and get the latest buzz from wagging tongues and tails in Rin Tin Tinseltown. From famous pet experts and best-selling authors to television and movie stars, you'll get great tail-wagging pet tips and have a fur-flying fun time. All behave with America's pet edutainer, Arden Moore. Every week on demand, this is the place for a special paparazzi treat, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs>